<laughs> oh, they just don't write books like this anymore. Welcome to Monday. Here is your wrestling news. Could a Raw star be turning babyface soon? Original plans for AEW's Inner Circle have been revealed. And AEW scoring a big ratings win over WWE. We'll talk about this in a moment. Let's talk about Lana. Bust out the weird saxophone. She leads a lonely life. It's Lana's theme music. So Lana was the talking point in the Wrestling Observer newsletter. And it looks as if there are plans afoot to make Lana a face. So Meltzer reports uh, that WWE are very high at the moment on the idea of making Lana uh, one of the, the, the top baby faces on the women's division. And she's had a rough month, what with going through a table multiple times at the hands of Nia Jax, being turned on, on her, by her friend uh, in Natalia. And this past Monday, winning the Battle Royal was said to be a, a beginning of that turn towards making Lana the, the, this babyface character. And do you know what? You can kind of see why that would work. Someone like Lana, who is very much seen as, as very much been a victim of, of, a, of assault at the hands of Nia Jax over the last month. You can kind of feel that sympathy building towards her becoming a meme. And I, I genuinely think there is a little something here in making Lana this sort of underdog baby face, but not just any baby face. No, 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 because the, the report from Meltzer specifically says the term massive baby face has been used within the company, which suggests they want to put her near the tippity top of the Raw Women's Division. We know that Lana is very much getting into the rigors of deeper wrestling training. If you follow uh, her videos online, you'll see that her and Natalia have been doing some intensive training lately. And you can see watching Monday, Monday Night Raw week to week that there are some some steps and progress being made by Lana as a performer. You can you can see that in front of your very eyes, you know, no Luthez, but Lana Thez, maybe. There's certainly some progress being made there. So don't be surprised if uh, this the, tonight on Raw, where we have Asuka versus Lana, whether you see Lana being shone in a particularly favorable light by the end of the match. On the other side at AEW, we were talking about the Inner Circle. Uh, Chris Jericho in particular talking about the Inner Circle uh, with my boy Chris Van Vliet. And they discussed some of the original plans for that faction. He goes into quite a bit of detail, actually, does Chris, about what the plans were early on and who was meant to be in it. He says, quote, Tony Khan wanted me to be part of, fa of a faction. I've never been part of one before. He wanted it to be like a band, sort of Chris Jericho and the Conspirators, whatever it would be. Uh, it was during a BTE that Matt and Nick asked me to do. I said something about my inner circle being involved, to which they said, inner circle's a cool name. So that's how it became the inner circle. But what about the members of the inner circle? Chris Jericho goes into detail, and the lineup that we have now isn't the lineup that he originally uh, was looking to get. So he says, quote, I think the original tag team, one of the ideas that was being banded around was Phoenix and Pentagon. And then I thought, I don't want gimmick guys or mask guys. And then Santana and Ortiz came up. They were part of the Jericho Cruise uh, a while back. And, they, and, the, and the Bucks uh, were very much in favor of that saying how good they were on the first cruise. So Jericho said, okay, let's throw them in there. Jericho then goes on to say, quote, I wanted MJF but Cody wanted to do stuff with him. I think we're now getting some MJF and Jericho stuff, which is nice to see. Um, so, so then as a, as a backup from that, uh, Cody says, what about Sammy Guevara? Jericho says, I scouted Sammy and brought him to the table. I never met him before in my life. I watched him on an NWA pay-per-view that Cody was wrestling on and I saw him. I like, this guy is good. He's, he's miscast as a baby face. He looks like an a-hole. <laughs> So that's cool. And then for the heater, so the muscle of the group, Jericho says, there's a guy called Anthony Agogo, who is a boxer, and they were suggesting him. And I was like, I don't want that because I had that in WWE a couple of times. They gave me heaters that were smaller than me or the same size. Uh, I wanted a big guy. And I did kickboxing training with the same trainer as Jake Hager. 
and I was, and he was getting ready for Bellator fights. I started talking to him like, are you interested in coming back? And he said, I'd love to. I pitched it to Tony and Tony said, this is the guy I want. I've always been a big fan of this. I wanted him to be my heater back in WWE, but they just miscast him. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to do with a six foot six, good looking blonde guy who can work and had a character that could talk in the right circumstance. What the F, but that's fine. So we got him, we got him involved. So there you go, the original uh, Inner Circle looking very different to the one that we got on the telly. We are sending our best to the friends and family today of Principe Aereo over the weekend. At just 23 years old, Principe Aereo passed away during a wrestling match. So it was a match that was taking place for the Mexa wrestling promotion and it was it's just an unfortunate series of events where we saw uh, Aereo take two chops to the chest, not particularly hard chops to the chest, and, uh, and, a, and a kick into the, to the lower plexus, and again, not a, not a hard kick on that either, and then he collapses in the ring, the match is called off, and he's taken uh, to the hospital, which is over the road from the venue, but unfortunately by the time he's got there, uh, he's already passed away. Now, the Wrestling Observer reached out to Dr. Greg Mara, who saw a tape of what happened involving uh, Principal area and he says quote I've seen in the hospital a few times teenagers coming into ER in cardiac arrest after getting hit in the chest with either a lacrosse ball or a hockey puck usually it happens when the heart is in between beats and it ends up going into ventricular fibrillation my educated guess would be the chop was in between beats and the rhythm was thrown off as he went into v-fib and they just go down instantly when that happens just a devastating unfortunate turn of events in the ring that led to a very untimely death. Just a young man, barely out of his 20s. Uh, he'd wrestled for a number of promotions uh, around Mexico. He'd been on AAA a couple of times. He'd, he'd come from the, from the wrestling training tutelage of Bandido and was, was very well liked and high regarded as well as one of these young prospects that was already doing great things. WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley and NXT Cruiserweight Champion Santos Escobar both took to Twitter to pay tribute uh, to Principe Aereo following this unfortunate turn of events. And we here at Cultaholic, we send our love uh, to Luis Angel Sanchez, AKA Principe Aereo, who passed away this weekend. Just the other weekend, we had the GCW Collective Weekend. And from that event, uh, some wrestlers and uh, people in attendance at the show tested positive for COVID-19. The latest to do so uh, is GCW and ROH regular Tony Deppen. He took to Twitter to say, COVID results came back positive. If you're dumb and didn't already get one, get one. Thankfully, everyone I was around all weekend had negative results even the people I was in a car with for nine hours. I guess I am just the lucky one. Uh, he says that the toughest blow of all is that it was meant to be uh, the baby shower this weekend uh, for, for his partner, and consequently, uh, that isn't happening. Now he's been in isolation for a week. He'll have another week in isolation. And uh, unfortunately, because of this, anybody that was part of the GCW Collective uh, has been, as a precautionary measure, pulled from the Ring of Honor tapings. So Tony Deppin won't be a part of ROH next week, I, next month either. And so once again, the call goes out to people who attended the Collective. If you're part of it, whether you were a wrestler there, whether you were a ring crew, whether you were in the crowd, uh, get a COVID-19 test done. And finally, some big ratings wins for AEW in the United Kingdom. We've talked for a year about how strong AEW Dynamite has held against NXT. Uh, easily the majority winner of the Wednesday Night Wrestling War. Uh, but some big wins coming out of the UK as well. So in, in the UK, IT, ITV broadcasts AEW Dynamite on its regular channel and uh, also on ITV4, both of which are available uh, to everyone in the country they're not subscription services however wwe is on bt sport which is a paid subscription service which means there's less eyes on the products and boy have aew absolutely owned this market aew tweeting out some big data from from the uk dynamite is beating first run broadcast of all its competitors in the uk for audience volume dynamite's audience is over five times that of nxt double that 
of SmackDown and almost double that of Raw. It also is double the audience of Impact Wrestling, which has been airing in the same slot as Dynamite and also a free to air channel. Dynamite benefits from reaching considerably more people than any of its competitors. With full episodes of Dynamite on ITV4 having reached 2.8 million people based on five plus minutes of consecutive viewing. Uh, the first AEW programming on ITV channels also reaches 6.7 million people based on them having at least five consecutive minutes of viewing. So it's a big win for AEW in the United Kingdom. Hey look, if WWE aren't going to put on a SummerSlam in Wembley, how about an AEW bash at the beach at Wembley? Let's get on with it. Come on, bring it over here. Obviously when COVID's not around, bring it on over here. Stay safe. Love you, bye.